Good morning everyone here from St Helier in Jersey, one of the Channel Islands. I just want to show you where I'm staying. This is my hotel room, £41 a night. And you can see there I've got my own kettle and tea and coffees and a wash basin and a mirror of course. Hello everyone. And in here, got a shower and the loo and a nice picture there of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And that will become relevant later because we'll see a lot of the English and French influences here on the island. But the plan today is just to go and explore a little bit of St. Helier. And at the moment at least, it looks pretty all right. It's not raining, but it might be a little bit chilly. So I need to wrap up and I've got a, my jacket and my hoodie. So the immediate plan is to go downstairs and have some breakfast. But there's also a map of Jersey in reception where I'll talk a little bit about its size and its dimension. So let's go downstairs. Here's an old map of Jersey. Just want to show you the sort of dimensions of the island. There are 12 parishes and we are here in St. Helier. And the island is only nine miles from west to east and five miles from north to south. 46.2 square miles. Small island. Bye bye. Thank you. Right guys, let's go and explore a bit of St. Helier. No idea really what to expect. So what I do know is there are a lot of English and French influences on the island. Obviously know about Jersey cows and Jersey potatoes, the Jersey royal potatoes. Other than that, let's just go and explore some interesting cars on the street and it looks like pretty busy traffic there's a roundabout with some trees and a tunnel over there hopefully that takes us to the town center so let's go through the tunnel so use the other footpath oh this is familiar looks the same in england the street signs road signs are similar to that in england as well here we go pedestrians and a sign that says the air quality in the tunnel is poor during peak traffic periods. Wow. So this tunnel was opened in 1970. And we made it right at the end of the tunnel. And look at these interesting click cut bushes and trees. Reminds me a bit of Tunis in Tunisia. Well, Everything else looks very different from Tunis. Another first impression, some very interesting architecture. Here we're passing the Troubadour and the Jersey Museum and Art Gallery. Here's a depiction of a, a sailor, Jersey sailor. And there's a post box. And I'll actually tell you an interesting story about the post box and the first post box in the British Isles was actually here in Jersey. Not this particular one, but if you're familiar with Anthony Trollope, the English novelist, he was a postal worker in his day job and he was stationed here in Jersey for a part of his work life. One of his assignments apparently was to try and figure out a way to improve a postal service and he came up with the pillar post box as a way to do it. So Anthony Trollope, the novelist, his connection with Jersey as well as the post box. Quite interesting. Check this out. A stone monument here, which is quite random. And then, how brilliant is this? Happy to chat bench. Sit here if you don't mind someone stopping to say hello. So, obviously encouraging locals and visitors to have a bit of a conversation just look at all the kelp here on the beach amazing amount that is washed up 
the shore and you can see over there as well yeah just kelp everywhere so my understanding is that seaweed has traditionally been used as a fertilizer probably still is at the moment if someone could confirm that for us in the comments that would be great but the jersey royal potatoes they love seaweed as a fertilizer apparently and well, even in Lambert's Bay in South Africa which believe me has got quite a lot of kelp as well go and watch the video of Lambert's Bay if you don't believe me but I've never seen so much kelp washed ashore and the Jersey dogs just having a bit of fun with their owner oh mate Here yeah, we've got further evidence of Jersey's importance as a strategic asset in the Channel Islands. Because the spot here, this sign says, has always been recognized as a likely landing spot for an enemy. And you've got to love the tourism board here. Information in English and French. See Tunisia, you can learn from Jersey. And obviously there's a lot of ferries from the UK, places like Poole and Portsmouth that come here. I came here by plane and the plane journey from Gatwick was only 30 minutes. That's how quick it is. And yeah, there you can see, I presume that is a ferry over there. All boats are in harbour, pray God. And there certainly are a lot of boats over here. And as it say, a strong gale, chimney pots might fly. And here you've got some information as well about St. Helier. And I hope you can hear it because it's right next to the traffic here. And I believe it's actually a big traffic problem in St. Helier in Jersey because it's such a densely populated island a very small island of course See even even crossing here This uh, short section yeah might be might be tricky and here's a truck and the reason I point out the truck is because it's actually quite significant in terms of the development of a road infrastructure in Jersey. So in the late 19th century, the trucks were loaded with potatoes and they wanted to get to the harbour, to the port, to export the potatoes and other agricultural goods. But the roads were too narrow, the roads weren't sufficient. So the roads had to be widened and as a result a lot of the architecture you see today in St. Helia Go, are close. Hello guys, how's it? How's Hi. it? <laughs> so, so a lot of the architecture you see today is of the Regency era and after. Not that mural there though, that is pretty new. I don't think they had Wi-Fi in the late 19th century. Yeah, guys we are here on Castle Street and there's some information here as well about the places of interest close by and I want to draw your attention specifically to Elizabeth Castle because we will visit that in due course check this out this sculpture or monument here the Jersey Girl a sculpture by Rowan Gillespie and a few Beautiful quotes there. All good things are wild and free. The Jersey girl almost doing a skydive or a bungee jump. Signifying her freedom. And I think for now, let's just walk a little bit 
along Castle Street and uh, see what we can find there. Maybe get to a town centre of some sort. So I presume. Yeah, so we are there at the moment. If we walk up there, we'll get to places like King Street, and Union Street. Actually, whilst we uh, whilst we're here at the map, I just want to draw your attention to the names of the streets. And what you will realise, you've got some French names there: La Route de la Libération. And you've got English street names as well, like King Street, Broad Street. So, obviously, what that means, or that, what that signifies, is the French and English influences here on the island. Right, we've hit the town centre now, so let's see what St. Helier town centre looks like. So yeah, we've moved away from the traffic of cars, the traffic of people. You can see the clock tower. And there's a face of Helia, the monk. Saint Helia. First impressions these same high street shops you'll find in the UK anywhere. But of course this isn't part of it, it's not part of the UK. King Street, beautiful flowers, yeah, and a lot of people here. Yeah, it seems like the, the whole of the island is here on a Saturday. Very lovely stroll here in Jersey, St. Helia town centre. St. Helia is the capital, it's the only town in Jersey, and I'm not entirely sure about the what the population is. I've read that it's between 100 and 110,000 people, that is of Jersey, and about 35% of the population lives here in St. Helier. It's actually very densely populated. Oh, and that's very beautiful. Even though I mentioned earlier, it feels like the entire island is here on a Saturday, it's still a very relaxing vibe. Lovely to walk around. <laughs> so you have La Boulangerie and Amélie. Love St. Helier. You look lovely today. Oh, thank you, St. Helier. Thank you very much. It's a bit cold, but, uh, but I'll take it. Anyway, back to business. And you will see here there are some cows on display, not actual cows, but statues of the famous Jersey cow. One of the most prominent cattle breeds in the world. And you can see the Jersey cow, its origin in the island of Jersey, has long been recognized as a superior dairy animal through its natural ability to produce rich milk. And a little bit more of the shopping area here in St. Helier. And you can see there, Queen's Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee, 2022. So, as a crown dependency, Jersey is still a possession of a crown, even though it's not part of the United Kingdom. New Cut, that's an interesting name for a street. So, Jersey has a very interesting history. We are here on Liberation Square. Over here we've got a monument signifying the defeat of the Nazis at this place on the 9th of May 1945. Advanced parties from the Royal Navy and the British Army liberated Jersey from nearly five years of occupation by the German forces. In fact, the Channel Islands, so Jersey and Guernsey, were the only parts of the British Isles that were occupied by enemy forces in World War II. So that is quite significant. Just to give a bit of context about the French, the English influences on the island to understand that a bit better. So in the 9th century, the Vikings plundered Jersey. 
and in the 10th century the Normans they took control of Jersey and they redeveloped the island and its agricultural sector and obviously in the 11th century in 1066 you had the Battle of Hastings where William the Conqueror who was from Normandy became the King of England. It was only until 1204 when King John at the time lost Normandy to the French King at the time that the future of Jersey was again up for debate and King John recognized the military and strategic importance of Jersey and Guernsey and he made an offer to them say listen are you willing to be the first line of defense against the French if you're willing to do that and to support the English crown I will offer you in exchange the ability to govern yourself and to set your own laws and to develop your own finance system your own tax system and what did the French offer in return? Nothing. So Jersey decided to side with the English crown. This old Second World War mine is placed here as a collection box. And Chichester, Sussex. That's not too far from my hometown, which is Brighton in England. Ah, and here we are approaching something interesting, some ship technology by the looks of it. And that's actually quite a nice segue into the next bit of information I want to share with you. But just going back to me mentioning that Jersey decided to align itself politically to the English crown after King John's offer. But you can't change your physical geography. The fact of the matter is that Jersey is much closer to mainland France than it is to the UK. So over the years, Jersey adopted a lot of a French way of life, a lot of the French cultural norms. And it was only really until the development of the steamship that there was a large influx of people from the UK and from England to the island. Because before the development of a steamship, the journey from England to the island of Jersey took several days and it was a very difficult journey of course over the waters of the channel. So the steamship definitely played its part in the English way of life being adopted in Jersey. There's someone who's very happy singing a song. And he's singing in English, of course, so English cultural norms and the language adopted here on the island. And just next to the monument here, as the guy continues singing, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he knows he's going to be on YouTube. But anyway, here we've got a mural depicting some celebration or a feast and I'm not exactly sure what they are celebrating or commemorating but I do recognize a flag of Portugal over there so so why is that significant well after the Second World War the finance sector and tourism sector of Jersey were further developed and gained further prominence and as a result of the growth of especially the offshore finance industry a lot of the local population moved into those jobs and they left their jobs in other sectors such as agriculture and that in turn meant that there was a shortage of labor in those sectors so Jersey turned to Madeira which is a Portuguese island to fill a lot of those seasonal jobs and a lot of Madeirans moved to Jersey immigrated to Jersey and I think still today work in the hospitality sector and in agriculture seasonal work again yeah just walking here the traffic as a first impression that's something that will stick with me hello the traffic and all the yachts here the toys of the rich and famous so I actually wonder what the combined value of all these boats and yachts are if you add it up. 
it must be quite a sum of money. Jersey. I believe is a bit of a playground for the rich and famous. But it's very difficult to buy property here apparently. And there's the Liberty Wharf. Bit of a shopping area complex. And behind there, that was the Liberation Square where we were earlier. And check out this for a bit of colour. I've just got some information here about St. Helier and Elizabeth Castles. 22 minutes away. Gosh. Well, anyway, let's, uh, let's see if we can get there before it gets dark and starts raining. Whilst we walk down to the bay area there, I want to talk to you about knitting and the island's fascination with knitting. So England obviously used to have its fair share of wars with the rest of the world and they needed an export market for their wool to a place that they were not at war with and Jersey was identified as such a market and England started to export a lot of wool to Jersey and as a result the Jersey population started to knit and they fell in love with knitting they knit so much that in 1608 a law was passed that said that if you are over the age of 15 you're not allowed to knit during harvest time so what happened was people started to knit so much and even including during harvest time that there was no one to harvest the crops and even children in those days could knit the knitting was so prolific that around about 10,000 pairs of woolen stockings got knitted every week and it said that Mary Queen of Scots actually wore a pair of Jersey stockings to her execution also the Jersey population knitted during church time and the sounds of a knitting was so annoying for the vicars that they had to put a stop to it and what do we have here this is interesting the freedom tree unveiled by her majesty the queen on the 9th of may 2005 the tree represents freedom peace and hope for the future so quite a nice little sculpture here i quite like it so i was going to talk about knitting a bit further and have you ever heard the alternative word for a jumper or a sweater called a jersey have you ever made a connection that it's to do with the island in some way so there are 12 parishes on the island of jersey and it is said that if a fisherman or a sailor drowned back in the day they could identify which parish the fisherman or the sailor came from by the knitting pattern of his jersey and I find that very interesting and you actually get Guernseys as well apparently so when I'm in Guernsey and yes that will happen soon I'll go to Guernsey as well we can hopefully talk a little bit more about that but in the meantime just check this out how beautiful is this and wait for it guys there's a there's a cherry on the cake just look how low the tide is as well and I've read that there's a huge difference in the size of the island when it's low tide compared to when it's high tide so the island apparently almost doubles in size if someone in the comments could confirm that for me that would be great but this just looks absolutely brilliant and as we walk towards the Elizabeth Castle I want to tell you an interesting story and it involves Charles II the King of England in the 17th century so during the 17th century there was a famous war the English Civil War and Charles II when he was still Prince Charles so not yet King he fled England and sought refuge here 
in Jersey. He came here twice to Jersey actually, so not just once, but twice. And I believe, at least for part of that refuge, he was stationed in Elizabeth Castle. And when he eventually became king, he never forgot what Jersey meant for him in terms of his safety and his freedom. And how did he repay the governor of Jersey at the time? He gave him a chunk of land in the Americas, which eventually became New Jersey. There you go. That's where New Jersey gets its name from. I just met this friendly gentleman here, Chris. All right there. He gave me uh, some information here. Now, if you've got people out there now, it's clear now. So yeah. it's 315, the path's clear. And okay. It won't cover until nearly eight o'clock. Okay. okay. You can go and explore, you're gonna lose a bit of daylight. But you've got a couple of hours almost, haven't you? Yes. And yes. you can uh, the castle's closed. You don't want to go around that side because it's cut off by the sea. Right. You go this side, the harbour side, and you've got the Hermitage Rock at the back there with a chapel right. on it, yes. dedicated to St. Helier. You've got time to get across and explore that. Oh, brilliant. And come back. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's usually, we've had 11.4 metres, right. which is approximately 38 feet, and the, high, the longest tide is 40 feet. Okay. It's from absolute zero out there, and it will be up here, and when it's a 40 feet tide, all the yes. boats in the harbour are that far below what would be the, the harbour wall, okay. which, which right. normally holds them. That's right. what they're worried about, global warming and tidal surges. Yes, Those yes. boats would be down the dual carriageway. <laughs> you go down yeah. these concrete steps, okay. just go across on the path. Okay, yes. Because they are, as that is now, that's about right to drive. You might be able, in, in the shallowest bit, drive, I'll be driving through a little bit of water. Okay. I'm just waiting for my missus. She's got a hair oh, appointment. Good, sir, yeah. So it's probably going to be near a four o'clock and it'll be well clear. Yeah. That's the missus now. Oh, that's good. Well, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Really, appreciate have, it. have a good time, my friend. Take it easy, man. Bye thank bye. you very much. His missus just called him there, but he said it's actually safe to walk over there. We've got some time. So I'm going to walk here. Yeah, the low tide and you can see uh, here some steps towards the Elizabeth Castle let's go right I hope that the weather forecast is right and that the high tide won't come until 8 o'clock or about that time so it's only about 3 30 now so we should be all right to walk there and back and yeah there's a I wonder what this is Maybe one of the locals could let us know what this is. I mean, just look at how prominent and how profound it is. It may be low tide, but it's still quite wet. So you need to be careful not to step in the water. But luckily, here's a cement path. Yeah, just look at all the rocks here. It's not quite the Giant's Causeway, but still a lot of rocks here. And there's a little stream here. Can we pass? Oh, just almost got some wet shoes there. Let's just look at that. And looking back towards St. Helier. And I believe over there is St. Auburn Bay. St. Auburn's Bay. Yeah, what a brilliant walk here towards the castle. Can you imagine being Charles II or Prince Charles at the time? Walking towards the castle, seeking refuge, maybe having a seaweed snack or so along the way. Yeah, probably not. But he would have had a very nice view of the castle here. Yeah. We won't be able to go in. And obviously this is January. This is uh, not tourist season here in Jersey. So a lot of things are shut, unfortunately, but we just got to make the best of what we got. I hope there's some information boards for us over there. Nothing but the sound of birds and the St. Helier traffic. So what do you think of St. Helier here in Jersey? Let me know in the comments. I've quite enjoyed my day so far, even on a cloudy day.
these footprints will be gone when the tide appears again but for now I can say I've left a footprint here in Jersey in St Helia right here we go stone walkway towards the castle gate and there's an easy jet plane I think I think I can see the orange there so my plane journey from Gatwick this morning only took 30 minutes I wonder how long it took Charles II or Prince Charles to travel from England to here back in the day it would not have been 30 minutes I can guarantee you oh gosh bird flu a risk of bird flu has been identified okay anyway Elizabeth Castle so that's a shame we can't go in but we get an absolutely magnificent view here And it's just nice standing here and taking in the silence and thinking of the history of a place. Elizabeth Castle. And a testament to the island's strategic importance and the military history of the island. It's just lovely to be here. So guys, I've actually decided to walk around the castle yeah, on the beach and I don't know if you can see there's a couple walking there told me there's a nice church around here so let's see if we can find it and that is of course if I don't break a leg climbing here yeah I should be alright don't try this at home. Let's look over back here. Random adventure. I think it's a bit safer walking here then. And over there. Let's see if we can find the church. Wow, guys. This reminds me so much of home. this piece of brick it's amazing how strong the ocean is isn't it this used to be a brick and the water of the ocean molded it and shaped it and reduced it to a tiny stone and when you walk around Malko Bay in South Africa Malko Bay you see them so as a rugby coach would say if you can't go through a defense you go around a defense if you can't get through a castle you go around a castle but it looks shut there as well it might be shot there but there's a chicken oh well we have a visitor are you the keeper of his castle I come in peace. I'm not looking for Charles II. That is a bit random. The old chicken is it gonna follow me? Well let's see. It's still following me. Alright chicken, let's go on an adventure. Come on. Okay, bye chicken. <laughs> that was a bit random there is the old church let's go over there the church over there is shut as well it looks pretty old and here next to the old church there is an old house or some structure I don't know but judging by the way it's built it's definitely very very old yeah let's 
let's go up here. What's this, Elizabeth Castle? But okay, this fortress was built 400 years ago, so please watch your step as you explore its nooks and crannies. So, I don't know if that refers to the castle there, as well as the church, or just the castle, but I suspect this church is at least 400 years old. Let's look at all the moss here. Oh wow. Pretty small. Only one window there, one over there. Wow. Just to give you an idea again of its dimension, so. Pretty tiny. And securely locked, of course. Can't go in, but... Yo, guys, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. This is... Really, really special. This little trip, and the juxtaposition with the traffic in St. Helier in the town centre is quite stark. And right guys, I think this is also where I'll end my vlog. I hope I don't sound like I'm echoing with the church, but yes to it. So if you haven't done so yet, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this tour of St. Helier and beautiful surroundings. But for now, I just want to say again, thanks for watching my videos and I'll see you again soon.